and grow YouTube show. Let's talk about why any of these, so any all-encompassing terrarium growing under glass, what are the benefits and what are the problems that can arise with growing in this manner? Well, there's lots of benefits. Um, one of the benefits is like in a terrarium, you get to house plants that you might not otherwise be able to keep in a home. And that's because most of these plants, these miniature plants, um, they usually need high humidity. And that's why you don't see them in the stores. If you were to try to grow it as a house plant, it would die very fast because we have heating, we have air conditioning, and that dries out our air right away. So one of the main benefits is being able to grow really cool plants that you might not otherwise be able to grow. Um, and the issues it, the issues that I see most commonly in growing in a terrarium setting, um, well, the first one would be mold. That's the most common because it's a warm and humid environment. Mm -hmm. And it, it just, it's perfect. It's perfect conditions for mold to take over. And what happens in such a small environment is that's exactly what it does. It takes over and it can start to eat away at your plants mm -hmm. and you don't want that. Um, so you can avoid that um, by not using biodegradable items in your terrarium. So for example, um, sticks, leaves, pine cones, things like that, they're, they're going to, um, the word went away from me, sorry. They're going to decompose very quickly mm -hmm. and mold's job in nature is to decompose things. So you're gonna attract more mold that way and it can get out of control quickly. Um, so don't use those things, especially especially in the small enclosed like jars. Mm -hmm. If you're if it's in a vivarium, usually there's some sort of like airflow coming through. Those things would be more okay in that situation. Um, but one important aspect of keeping your terrarium healthy and combating mold at the same time is making it bioactive. Mm -hmm. And like I mentioned before, what that means is just adding little creatures, <laughs> little insects. Of course, they're probably technically not insects, but they, their main food source is mold or decomposing um, matter. So two of them that are used most commonly are springtails, which are really teeny, teeny, tiny, and um, isopods, which are a little bit bigger uh, I don't know if you have seen roly polies around mm -hmm. your house. Those are isopods. Okay. And so they can they can go in there and they like to eat on decaying um, whatever, you know, old. So do you buy their larvae and put the larvae in the terrarium before you seal it? No, um, they actually come already, you know, like adults. Uh -huh. uh, you can the best place to get them is any like pet store or online places that specialize in reptiles mm -hmm. or vivariums specifically. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I, the springtail, actually both, they're really cute and they're fun to watch. And, and so it's kind of neat to put those in there and see them get to work. They're hardworking, just like ants. <laughs> That's so cool. Um, it's interesting. We just did a carnivorous plant episode and he, our guest Damon from California Carnivores was talking about how carnivorous plants are overlooked as a fantastic fungus gnat mitigator because the fungus gnats stick to the sundews, their sticky leaves. And that's a great way to deal with a fungus gnat infestation. Yes. So it's interesting now learning that you can use beneficial insects to deal with molds because I feel like I actually didn't really know that. And, or I'd seen it in your book, but I didn't, didn't really think too much about it, but that's my biggest issue with all of the terrariums I've had is that they can get moldy and I don't know what to do. Um, yeah. so that's really interesting. Okay. All right. Yeah. We've already learned one major tip.